Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on a Tuesday, Thanksgiving week. It's the 26th of November. Just got this S&P chart up here. Really smacks of a uh, blow-off top here. Some sort of capitulatory action um, during the Asian session. Sort of confirmation of this is price is below 30. This is the four hourly chart here. Here's the hourly, the daily. It's a little bit early to look at this, but uh, back through 30, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna jump on board and and call this capitulation. Don't really know what drove it. Uh, you know, could be positive news from X Y Z. Um, not really sure. Could be Powell. Uh, you know, he was, I would say he was neutral, but maybe he was assumed. Um, he was, uh, he was dovish. Could have been the phone negotiations on trade. Uh, don't know what, what, Put us up there, but the the way we reacted on this price here, up through the all-time highs, big move through it, ten handles, and now straight back down, smacks of capitulation. In the boring currency world, uh, not really sure what to do with this. It looks like we might get some year-end dollar buying. Um, this is against our general call for Euro to go higher. We do think Euro is going to go higher still. Um, but we're seeing this constant move in, you know, LIBOR rates are going higher. There just could be some year-end demand from the banks. There could be year-end demand for dollars to shore up balance sheets. I don't know. I don't know why we're doing this. Uh, so, you know, I'm just making this story up to kind of fit the chart right now, so be careful of it, but certainly I would not be surprised if we break 108.89 in Euro. I will not be surprised if gold takes a trip down through 14. This is gold futures. Um, the low is 46.20. This looks at risk. Um, we obviously do have a Fed meeting coming up early in December. A lot of things can happen. We're not pre-positioning for any of this, um, but both of these levels, 1446 in gold, 109.90 in euro. These are levels you can make money around these levels. Uh, so we're not short euro going into these levels because we're sure it's going to trade. But we will be trading around these levels because there will be some action uh, at these levels. So these are what we call key levels. There will be stops through it. Um, Dollar Swiss, uh, we do not touch. We talked about how we feel like there's going to be selling into year-end, into December 15th from the hedging crowd here locally. You saw Novartis bought an American company in cash, $6 billion. And everyone got very excited. They're going to have to buy $6 billion. Um, Novartis Treasury is one of the most professional treasuries in the world. Uh, they don't need to raise $6 billion for a purchase. I'm sure they were told well in advance. Um, so they will be hedging less uh, dollars into Swiss francs. But don't think for a second that Novartis is going to have to go out and be like, Oh, Christ. Uh, management bought a US company, we're gonna have to buy you're gonna have to raise six billion. This has been done well in advance um, to the finalization of that merger. And one of the reasons they can do that is they have massive dollar revenues. So it's not even a question of selling Swiss francs to create dollars, it's just holding dollars um, from all the drugs that they sell uh, to Americans. So we're not buying into that story that there's going to be Dollar Swiss buying on the Novartis deal. Uh, we're still uh, buying into the story that there's going to be natural selling from the rest of uh, the huge corporations here in Switzerland uh, to tidy up their year-end books. 
So we're not doing anything in Dollar Swiss. We're not fading this yet. Uh, we, we will fade on real stretch. Um, but Dollar Swiss and also Euro Swiss at 110, we're expecting selling. Same story. Um, we'll see what happens. As far as news today, not a lot going on. We got some speakers, right? We got uh, Kore Gundos. We got Lane, who's the chief economist. We got the huh, we got the Bill out of Aussie speaking today, 10:05 a.m. I didn't realize that. Let's take a look at the Aussie charts. Here's Aussie yen. Not doing too much. Uh, Aussie dollar we know is on the lows. But also not doing too, too much. Made a new low yesterday. I guess 67.70 is, is a slightly interesting point in Aussie. Um, you got to keep an eye on that with uh, the Beal. 10.05 Swiss time. Um, finally, Sterling Yen. We got clipped yesterday. That sucked. And Sterling Cable. You can still be short Cable. Um, but we saw Cable demand all day. I don't know why it was so bid. We were just on the wrong side of this trade after that big red bar. A lot of people are saying the, the polling numbers that were so in favor of the conservatives of the weekend created some euphoria um, I think the market was just short we were short a lot of people were short um, now everyone's a little bit stuffed here so sterling yen we got stopped out of cable we remain moderately short um, but it's a bit worrying price is above 30 this is gonna have to get cut so We'll see what happens with sterling and maybe the overall general bid tone of the U.S. dollar helps push sterling down. The big point now is uh, 127.72. No idea what was going to drive that there, um, but we'll see. Later on in the day, we've got uh, Case Schiller out of the U.S. and we got new home sales um, coming out of the U.S. Brainerd speaking at 7 p.m. Swiss time. It's one of these weird ones on these quiet weeks. This Thanksgiving week is notoriously quiet but also incredibly binary, right? One piece of news and everything blows to pieces because liquidity is going to be super low and a lot of people are asleep at the wheel. My colleague from the States mentioned that he's remembered many, many big moves during Thanksgiving week. I also concur with that. Um, I can think of one specifically in $99 dollar yen down through 104.20. I was actually at a pool hall in Paris. Um, regrettable uh, that we missed that one. So you got to remain vigilant. Uh, I won't be at a pool hall at any time this week. Um, remain vigilant, but also recognize that it should be quiet until it's not, so it's quite hard to, to manage that, but you're going to have to, it's going to be a piece of news that's going to drive something, and so you have to be ready for it, um, but also not get too excited, because without a big catalyst this week, there should be nothing going on. Not sure if I made that clear, but you kind of see what I'm trying to say on this. Remain vigilant this week, but don't get too excited uh, on the little stuff. All right, listen, I've said enough. I feel like I'm babbling here. Good luck out there, people. Make some dough. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.